Welcome back to today. This morning we're imagining a world free of bias, stereotypes and discrimination because today is International Women's Day and we're still talking about systemic reform to improve women's lives and campaigning for equality. Broadcaster Susie Elliman and Nine Hartley columnist Maria Thatil are here to discuss this. Susie, I'm going to go to you first. The theme this year is Break the Bias, which is uh, another push uh, for equality. You've been in the media, especially, for, for a, a while now. So tell us about the progress that's being made and what more needs to be done. We have made progress, and I think this is what we really need to recognise. I think that's really important. It's interesting, giving it some thought, my mum and I used to discuss when I was younger whether we'd ever see a female Prime Minister or a female Governor-General. And, of course, I've seen that in my lifetime, even though mum didn't. So many more things we need to achieve. Um, a woman still dies once a week at the hands of domestic violence. Yep. Whereas for a man, it's once a month. Mm. Pay parity is something that we really have to look at. And not just the fact that women earn 12 to 15% less than men, but what happens when you get to my age is that there's not enough in the super. And now women over 55 are the biggest representation of women who are homeless. Mm. So there really is so much more. I mean, there's genital mutilation. There's so many more things mm. that we need to address as women. But I think having more women represented in as CEOs on boards and things like that, you reach a stage where you have to ask yourself, who's the best person for the job? So this says the best man for this job is a woman. And, and that woman, this woman is Susie Elliman. <laughs> Just ask her. No one's, no one's disagreeing on that, Susie, um, ever. It's, it's great. That mug still has a lot of meaning in 2022, doesn't it? It does. Uh, Maria, you've written a really interesting article about this from your perspective. Um, around this issue of breaking the bias, how do we break the bias? You know... Thank you so much for holding the space. I, I think when we're talking about breaking the bias, yes, we need to celebrate progress. Absolutely, Susie. But I think when we're talking about breaking the bias for women, we can't do that without acknowledging that not all inequality is created equal. And mm -hmm. unless we're looking at the fact that underrepresented women are disproportionately affected by this bias, we're not actually going to have all women reaping the benefits of women's rights. So, you know, when we're talking about, for example, I saw that we had the safety, respect and equity campaign just flashed up and it's against sexual violence and harassment, right? But we know that when it comes to sexual violence, transgender women of colour are actually more likely than any other woman to be assaulted by a stranger. So why have we not got any transgender women of colour, you know, represented in this group? So I, I just think... We will get there if we can have adequate representation of diverse voices who are disproportionately affected by said bias. I think your article was really um, inspirational, Maria. I read it this morning and it, it was something that was reflected in the women's movement and marches that came out a couple of years ago post-Trump where there was a lot of uh, women of colour in America that were saying, like, feminism that, is, that we know of at the moment is white feminism. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. really hard to sort of, like, then turn it around and uh, I read another article this morning guardian saying well you know if if I spoke about the prime minister this is a woman speaking woman comes if she spoke about the prime minister the way Grace Tame did she wouldn't have the backing of a lot of women yeah. because she was a person of color she'd be seen yeah. as you know terrible or angry and, and is that yeah. that's something else that I think your column highlighted yeah and it's just looking at you know there is sometimes a lack of intersectional accountability and allyship in Australian feminism. You know, why do we know, and I love these women, I love them, Grace mm. Tame and Brittany Higgins, why do we know those names but we don't hear the names Danya Mani or Tessa Sullivan, you know, very often. And these are women of colour who have been campaigning since 2018 against sexual violence and for political minorities based on their experiences, but they've been erased from media commentary and political life. And it's just saying that not all women have the same experiences. Mm. And it's honouring that we need to do better at representing diverse experiences because only then can we break the bias for everybody. Mm. And, and so it's just calling for intersectional, intersectional accountability and allyship. Well, this is a very broad conversation um, that needs to continue and we really appreciate you both joining us this morning and sharing your thoughts and your experiences as well. Maria and Susie, thank you so much for joining us.